Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zed Bell, to honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Former President Dwight D. Eisenhower said this, Listen carefully. There is nothing wrong with America that faith love of freedom, intelligence, and energy of her citizens cannot cure. Amen. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot. Come on, let's start the week off right with the Pledge of Allegiance, patriots. Good morning. My home, sweet home, good morning, good morning. Have we got an action-packed week for you? What duty? We've got a lot of great people coming on. Welcome to Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. You got a late summer road trip? They can help with all the best of tires. Stop in and see them today. And along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, Patriot. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You are such a nice lady and so much better looking than your other half. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) God bless you. Have a good day. Thank Thank you. you. Oh, wonderful lady right there. And talking about wonderful ladies, I think right now we're going to get the weather in a moment. But first of all, K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, right there, smack dab on the Burley Paul Highway. You couldn't miss it. Mm-mm. They got all the tools and equipment to finish any project. I mean, they've got uh, all the air compressors to clean out your combines. Uh, they got all the small excavators for digging new water lines. They got it all. You better do that before the weather turns cold too and i know you're laughing at me but i got a feeling we're going to have an early fall hey check it out today knr rental number to call six seven eight three one two two right now here is gina with the weather sunny for this week however smoke's going to play a factor as well so if you have some upper respiratory issues please make note of that Here's your weather forecast for Zevith Ranch. Smoky in our area, mostly sunny skies. I don't know how much sun we're actually going to see, though. Expecting a high of 91 tonight, partly cloudy and still smoky with a low of 60. Smoky for Tuesday, expecting a high of 92, slightly breezy as well. Tuesday night, we are expecting a low of 60. For Wednesday, partly sunny skies, high of 90. As we move on into the late afternoon hours, early evening hours of Wednesday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers and thunderstorms in the area with a low of 60. That's your weather forecast for Zebit the Ranch. Oh, Gina, good job. As always, brought to you by k and Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. They get there early in the morning at 7 o'clock, throw the doors open and say, come on in, world. They're right there on the Burley Paul Highway. Number to call, 67831. One two two K and R rental. Wow, what a weekend! And this, of course, is Cache County Fair Week, and we're going to have, um, I believe, Ryan Samples is going to be on the air tomorrow, going to be telling us all about what's going on. They're moving in this morning and getting all ready for the big Fair Week Cache County Fair. 
Uh, I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Daryl's Cleaners. Nobody does it better than they do. No, nobody. And you probably knew for a long time they can uh, dry clean and make sure all your clothes look brand spanking new. But did you know that if you don't want to do your washing, they can, and they will, wash, dry, fold, and iron all your clothes? Wow, what a service to you. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. They've been my friends and will be for the future, man. I'll tell you what, they do a great job. Daryl's Cleaners, you stop in and see them today. want to mention to you what's going on, and I want to thank all the Cassia County merchants and uh, they that have helped uh, advertise the Cassia County Fair on my program. And they are, caller, I'll be there in a minute. Don't forget, uh, some of them are AMI at 719 Overland and Burley. Look for the big 28-foot wrench over their door, and you will go nuts over their bolts. They are really good people, and we appreciate them. AMI in Burley. Along with Butte Irrigation, 116 South, 600 West Highway, 27 South and Paul, or the new location on Kimberly Road, north of Kimberly, by Red Cap Corner. I mean, when it comes to irrigation, when it comes to your needs in irrigation, they will get you wet. Butte Irrigation. Mountain Transmissions, 1146 East Main and Burley, right across from Stoats. I'll tell you what, Rick and the crew, free towing, free diagnostic, free estimates with the latest technology at Mountain Transmissions in Burley. And don't forget, today, Monday, Big Dairy Show in the Jack Funk Pavilion at the Cassia County Fair. And tonight at 7.30, the Moto Rodeo. Don't you miss it. Going to be a lot of fun at your Cassia County Fair and Rodeo. And then on tomorrow, Tuesday the 14th, all the 4-H and FFA shows. Moto Rodeo again tomorrow night continues. Wow, lots of fun. Your 2018 Cassia County Fair and rodeo caller i thank you for your call go ahead good morning Zeb. how are you doing today i am peachy bob every time you call i start to sweat because i don't know what avenue you're going to go down but go ahead well it pertains to the roads in casu county again okay last year they opened up the brand new school grade school and the road was left ragged rugged, dangerous, bumpy, and everything else, and they have not done one single thing for it in a year. They're going to, the school year is going to start, and the road is still in the same condition it was before. All right, now, under the auspices of the city, the county, the state, whatever, who is in charge, and have you called them and voiced your displeasure? Yes, I have. And what... what Nobody wants to take responsibility. I don't know whether the city has annexed it in or the county is still responsible for it. I can't find anything out. Nobody wants to take responsibility. Well, I got to tell you that I agree with you on road conditions around certain areas of this Magic Valley are absolutely out of sight dangerous, as a matter of fact. And some of the repaving, uh, absolutely, it must have been done by somebody that went on a Saturday night drunk and then decided to repave a road. I mean, some of the pits and the valleys and the swales are absolutely unbelievable. And I'll give you, for instance, Bob, uh, you're talking about over in Berlin but I'm talking about going into Kimberly. Kimberly. Uh, when you turn off of Kimberly Road and you go down into Kimberly, there's a bunch of swales, and they call that repaving. My goodness, it'll throw the front end out of your pickup or car. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of places like that. At this, at this place, there's a lot of parents and school buses travel on this little particular piece of road and it's just, it's pathetic. I cannot understand why they can't do something in a year. I just can't. Well, I tell you what, we've put the word out there, and if anybody has a difference of opinion or another attitude on this, they can give us a call and we'll start talking about it. But I concur with you, there's a lot of problems with the roads that should have been addressed before going into the fall. I don't know if it's a lack of money, a lack of manpower, and or both, but I appreciate your call, Robert. As always, you had a stimulating conversation. And also, I'm going back again up to it before, 
The railroad crossings in Cashew County are pathetic. Thanks, Zeb. Hey, buddy. I appreciate you. And they're not just in Cashew County. There are a lot of other places where uh, if you want to learn how to dribble a basketball by using a car or a vehicle, drive across some of those railroad crossings. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Calls welcome four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric at twenty six hundred Overland Avenue in Burley. Oh yeah, they're there early in the morning at seven thirty a.m. I almost said seven, but it's too early. Seven thirty, and they stay there till five or later Monday through Friday for all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. Now. I know you've been changing the filters on the AC to keep everything cool. Well, now you better think we're going into the middle portion of August, and then pretty quick the kids will be back in school. Pretty quick you'll get up in the morning and go, whoa, this floor is cold. Better turn the furnace on. So you better make sure everything's ship Give them a call. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 678-0459, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Also want to remind you too about a great place to eat. I am so doggone hungry this morning. And uh, Deanna and I got in late last night. Uh, we were doing some outside activities and everything. And oh, we, my lovely bride quickly threw together a ham sandwich and we sat there and ate it and then showered and went to bed. Well, that didn't cover the ground. And then a little bitty bowl of cereal this morning. Oh, I can't wait. I want to get over to Denny's restaurant. 611 North Overland in Burley. Great menu choices for Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, great service, friendly, friendly people serving you, and it's the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch, and we're going to be over there for Zeb's Lunch Bunch on the 23rd. Yeah, buddy, 23rd of August, don't miss it. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley and 291 Poline Road in Twin Falls. Absolutely America's Diner. Caller, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Do you suppose that if I grew a mustache, I would be good-looking like you? Nope. No way. It can't happen. Nope. Can't share the pride with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, here a while back when they had that real bad accident going to Twin Falls on the freeway, uh, we were on that road on the freeway, and we got off at Ridgeway Road, and that road going into Hazleton... Bob has a good point there, but this road is totally disguised because it looks like a perfectly paved road. Yeah. But it'll shake your car apart. I'll tell you. And I mentioned that to Gina, and she said, You're absolutely right. Absolutely. It's not my imagination. No, no. It's not your imagination. And honestly, Keith, there's so much of this uh, around the area where the roads supposedly, underline this word, are repaved or paved. And whoever did it, honest to goodness, I think they were absolutely on a binge for two weeks. There are more swales and bumps and lumps. That going into Kimberly is disgusting. You can say that again because I've... I've driven that before also. Yeah. Right there where you, you know, you're going into Kimberly and it's basically uh, that intersection where you can turn right to go down to that new school. My gosh, if you hit that wrong, if you're drinking a Coke or anything is sitting on your dashboard, it ain't going to be, it's going to be on the floor. You know, the old saying, you know, if you want to see how the water is, you stick your toe in and and then maybe your foot to see how it's going to be warm enough for you yeah that's what the petroleum companies have done now they stuck their toe in the water to see how much we will take yep and now they've got their whole foot in the prick well let me just tell you that uh we as americans i we're not doing the job keith you know as well as i do that you and nancy d no no wait a minute wait a minute we're not we're not causing an uproar we're not absolutely causing all kinds of heck for these people to listen to and know that we're not going to abide by their ridiculousness without a fight and without telling everybody how stupid we think they are and how ridiculous they are and how absolutely pocket gathering our cash i i, I just am so mad this morning because we as americans 
We are too laid back, and we've got it too good, and we're not in a fighting mood. I'll give you an example. This weekend, we watched a bunch of stupid, filthy groups like Antifa come out and damn this country and with the slogan, no borders, no walls, no USA at all. And you know, this is my country. This is your country. It's Nancy's. It's everybody's country. And we want the borders. We want the Constitution. We want laws. And these people are trying to destroy it. And what are we doing, Keith? We're not doing anything. We're not doing anything. Well, that's certainly true. And But this petroleum deal... Oh, you know what? I don't mean to minimize... I don't mean to minimize your subject. But right now, we've got big fish to fry. We've got the left that wants to destroy the Constitution. We've got the left that is advocating getting rid of the presidency. I'm not making this up. We've got the left that is yelling, no borders, no walls. And I'll tell you what, Keith, I really don't care about uh, fuel this morning. I'm worried about this country, the laws, our Constitution, everything more so than I am that. And then you got this crackpot, Amorosa, that's trying to stir things up. And the, and the Democrats are just in there probably furnishing her all the money she needs to try to discredit her. No, you know, she is nothing more. I lump her into the same category as the sick, detestable NFL black players that absolutely have no rhyme or reason to what they're doing. They were invited to sit down and have a... This is wrong. This is what we want session. And they backed out of it. I have no respect for people that won't create and try to solve a problem through discussion. And I'm looking at the NFL players as sleazy worthlessness, and I lump Amorosa into the same thing. Let them go the same game together because I don't care. There you go. Keith, always good to talk to you. You got my blood really high in pressure. Thank you. Take care of that mustache. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you. Oh, I've had this mustache for... Deanne, how long have I had this mustache? Before I met you, so about uh, 50 years. Wow. Hold on, caller. I'm coming. I'm coming. Stay there. Don't forget Dino Septic Service. They do a job that you don't want to do. Now, what more can I say? Call them. Okay, four three six six five two six or in Burley six seven eight one six three eight. I already told you they do a job you don't want to. You don't want to stand out there and pump a septic tank. Oh no, in ninety degree weather, you don't want to uh, go out and do the drain and the line cleaning of a sewer and sink drain. No, but they do. I'm telling you what, liquid waste removal, septic inspections, backhoe service. They're the best. Dino Septic Service recently expanded to help serve more people. Give them a call, like I said, 436 6526, and they got that big truck that says smells cargo on the way. Dino Septic Service, you call them today. Caller, I'll be there in a second. Don't go away. Don't get mad. Uh, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Again, I am going to start going back over there this next month. Got some problems I got to address, and I got some muscles that need to be rejuvenated, and they can help me with all the exercises and, of course, the hydrotherapy pool. If they can help me, they can help you. Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists right there at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, and the number to call, and I urge you to do so, 678-1191, helping you get back to being you. You're very patient. Good morning, caller. Thank you. Hello, caller. Are you awake or are you there? Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. You touched the nerve this morning. Uh oh. You know, the NFL has become a political organization. The owners no longer own the, the, the uh, teams. They're just collecting the millions and millions of dollars that are coming into their bank accounts. The big problem I have is many of the players are dissatisfied because you've got a white president sitting in the White House performing miracles that Barack Obama couldn't do for eight years. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
uh, wheels ride the gain a little bit on this call. Tony, I totally agree with you. However, there is one aspect of what you said I don't agree with. Uh, I think the owners, they need to toughen this situation up substantially. Why do the NFL football players, and let's face it, mostly black players, and it's not the whole team, it's a handful, 8, 9, 10, whatever it might be, but why don't the owners have a right to free speech also? And I mean like uh, Jerry Jones and the others. Okay, they're going to exercise their free speech. They own the team. They pay the bills. They take care of all the stadium. They pay all the players, and they've got the right to say, you don't play ball my way. You're Get your butt out of here. You're fired. Well, another thing that bothers me is how many millions of dollars are some of these players putting into anti-Trump Yeah. Uh, uh, plays that are going on. The world is sick right now, and part of the sickness is right here in this United States of America. And we're looking at a left organization that is increasing in size, increasing in volume, and once again, Wheels, we've got a little feedback on this line. And something's got to do something, somebody's got to do something to stop this cancer that started all across this country. Uh, they've been invited to go to talk to President Trump about some of their so-called reasons for kneeling and sitting during the national anthem, but they won't go. They say, well, I don't want to talk to Trump. I, he's not my president. If you're going to cause a problem and you don't try to solve it, then I minimize your problem and I say, you're fired. Well, <clears throat> we still need people to get together at our fairgrounds that are still wanting to see our country survive. Because if it keeps going the way it is, maybe 10... 10, 12 years down the road, there is no America left. I couldn't agree more. And I'll tell you something, Tony. I think uh, if, if it's not curbed, and I mean this, curbed, in the next year, we've got major problems that I don't think we can overcome. You're absolutely right. I've been down the road and I saw what happened to the city that I uh, grew up in. I agree. It's happening all around right here. I agree. Tony, God bless you and Mary. Thank you. we got to go to breakfast, buddy. Thank you. Yes, we will. All right. Mm. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, I'm going to ask your patience. Stay with me just a second. I've got to tell everybody about Save on Shells. Hello, Anthony and Save on Shells at 1027 Overland and Burley. And I mean this. You don't have to look any further for a camper shell because they have the best. Anthony absolutely has the best for you with the A-R-E shells. Oh, I love the shell he got from me for my pickup. Absolutely. You call him 312-1525. 312 -1525. Anthony and Save on Shells. I really brag about his service because he is a super service agent serving you for your camper shells. Give him a call. Stop in 1027 Overland and Burley. Anthony at Save on Shells 312 1525. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Uh, I. Uh... First of all, i, I got to be honest with you. I never did care about the NFL, but I know those who have, and I have friends who have. But uh, anyway, needless to say, uh, anymore, I, I don't try not to do anything I can for the NFL because until they can grab a hold of their own industry and... Uh, hold on a second, Riley. Wheels, ride that gain. He's so faint, I cannot hear this man. Please, go ahead. Go ahead. I said I, I uh, honestly never bothered with the NFL before. I just never been interested in football. However, even more lately, I try and, and minimize what interference I do have with the NFL as far as watching or buying or looking anything like that, just for the simple fact that you think that the owners and the people who participate in such an industry where there is a lot of money being rolled around and changed hands, that they would take the initiative themselves to uh, – Stop this kind of nonsense. Yeah. And if they're not willing to stop it, and if they're not willing to, to tell the players, you know what, we really don't need you. There are, are millions of talented young men out there who can play the game. We don't need you. And until they do that, 
They don't need my money. Well, I agree with family's money. I agree with you, Riley. I'm fed up with the NFL. I'm fed up with the slovenly uh, athletes that absolutely take no pride in their country, and uh, they kneel and they sit during our national anthem. If they want to protest, they've got six other days during the week on their own spare time that they can do this. And uh, I'm going to fight them. I'm going to ask that every owner fire these athletes, if you want to call them. I'm going to call them prima donnas. I totally agree with what you said. Thank you. Well, where else, what country in the world, what other country in the world can you come from that you can grow up in a broken home or, or from a family who has nothing and use the talents that God gave you to rise up and make a lot of money playing. That's exactly right. There is none. There isn't any. And these athletes aren't smart enough, and I'll underline that. They're not smart enough to understand that. Riley, thank you, buddy. i got to give away some cookies. Thank you. Right now I'm going to give away a dozen cookies to Sophie's Chatterbox. Oh, good eating, good eating at Sophie's. 530 East Street in Rupert. What a restaurant. What a bakery with all the cookies and the pies and the cakes and the wedding cakes. Beautiful wedding cakes. All of this and more at Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 E Street in Rupert. I am going to play with your mind a little bit on this one this morning because this is going to go back uh, about the uh, end of the early 1960s. Now, come on, audience, have some fun with this. There was a TV series on television in the 60s, a Western series called Johnny Yuma. Johnny Yuma, you know, Johnny Yuma was a rebel, that kind of thing. Who was the star? What was the lead actor's name in that TV series, Johnny Yuma? A lot of you that are a little gray on top of the head like me, you're going to remember this. But uh, quickly, this is a little tougher this morning. What was the actor's name? that played the lead in that old 1960s TV series, Johnny Yuma. And it's not one of your household names, but uh, <laughs> but give me a call on that and let me know what your thoughts are. Please, quickly, contest time to win a dozen cookies from Sophie's Chatterbox. On the old TV western Johnny Yuma, what was the actor's name that played Johnny Yuma? Give me a call quickly. While I am waiting for your call, I'm also going to tell you about Barry Equipment and Rental. Hello, Barry Equipment and Rental. And they've got three locations serving you with the biggest and best equipment. Man, oh, man, they've got all those big deuce on equipment, like the loaders, etc. Oh, I mean, you need a big job done? Doosan can get it done. And then, of course, they've got all the Bobcat excavators, all shapes and sizes, for lease or purchase. Get a hold of them today. Barry Equipment and Rental. 159 West Highway 30 in Burley with Juan. 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls with Eli. And the Nampa location. Waiting right now to serve you with the best of equipment for retail sales or equipment rentals. Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, come on, please, hurry. Give me the answer, please. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. What was the name of the actor that played the lead in the old TV western Johnny Yuma? Please, I, I'm going to be really impressed with whoever wins, and I might even sweeten the pot a little bit. I'll tell you what, because it's not an easy answer. Quickly, somebody check that out and give me a call. I want to hear if you got the right answer. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I just felt like making it a little tougher this morning. Okay, 29 more people. This is so sickening and pathetic. I'm going to talk about this in just a minute. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, The name is Nick Adams. Who is this? Uh, I can hardly hear you. I said, who is this? This is Brent Nicholas. Uh, Brent, what's your last name again, please? Nicholas? Yeah, Nicholas, just like St. Nicholas. Well, how in the world did you remember that? I'm an old fan of uh, TV westerns. 
My, I am impressed. If you said Nick Adams, you are right, and all you need to do is get a hold of Sophie's Chatterbox. Tell him when you'll be in for your cookies. Brent, doggone it. Sometime call him. We'll talk about old TV westerns sometimes. Okay, thank you. Hey, buddy, thank you for calling. That's good of you. Brent Nicholas is the winner, and it was Nick Adams. He uh, he played the part of Johnny Yuma, supposedly a Confederate War veteran, but in the casting, Johnny Yuma, Nick Adams, had a distinct, like, New York accent. (laughs) <laughs> I never will forget that. Nick Adams, yes, that's the right answer. And Brett Nicholas wins the cookies. Congratulations. 29 more people were shot in Chicago over this weekend. Two more killed. And it's just absolutely chaotic gang mob rule. What's Raul Emanuel doing? Nothing. Nothing. All he's doing is running for re-election. Why would the city of Chicago, and I'm just stumped about this, I do not understand. Why would the city of Chicago at all, anyone, put a check mark next to Rahm Emanuel's name to re-elect him as mayor? Why? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. This is a yummy man. Hello! Oh, yummy man, how are you? What's going on at the Senior Junction? Well, today we're having fried chicken and assorted desserts, including cream pie. And, of course, we'll have some vegetables in the middle. Okay, but now wait a minute, Joe. Wait a minute, yummy man. What kind of a cream pie? Oh, well, you got me there. Uh, <laughs> But I guarantee it'll be good. No, you guarantee it'll be yummy. Now, tomorrow we're having breakfast and probably we'll have uh, this pizza for dessert. Okay. We could use some help if anybody wants a volunteer to come in and help put up Meals on Wheels. They have to do about 60 or more of those a day, and it takes some help to get them put together and get them out. All right, and what is the telephone number over there to call, Joe? 208-878-8646. And that, of course, from the man that knows, the yummy man on behalf of the Senior Junction right there on Overland, and uh, he's going to go research right now and find out what kind of cream pie they're going to have. Everybody's welcome. You don't okay. have to be a senior to come and have the best lunch value in town. There you go, Joe. God bless you, man. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Have All right, buddy. Time. Thank you. Uh, caller, be right with it with you on caller number two. Stand by. Don't forget on Tuesdays at nine forty-six. It's Stoats Equipment, your John Deere dealer, at one nineteen Burley Overland and Burley. And believe me, Vic and the rest of the crew. Oh, these are good, good people. Let me tell you, they're good people. Talking about all the ag events, they're going to be at the Cache County Fair, and we're going to talk to Vic about that tomorrow. Stoats Equipment Company, your John Deere dealer. They make your life easier. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Well, my heavens. Haven't heard from this old hombre for a long time. Well, it's a good thing the Obama administration isn't still in office. The EPA would have been on you for that dust you was raising yesterday by blocking the view across the highway. What dust? <laughs> no, seriously, what are you talking about? <laughs> you, know, I, you know, this is what really infuriates me. When you live in an agricultural area and you do agricultural things, keep your mouth shut and just thank the good Lord that people are working in agriculture. That's right. Thank, yeah, be thankful your belly's full. Absolutely. Now that you've made me mad, go ahead. Looks like he's having a good time. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> You were sitting on the back of this four-legged animal instead of sitting inside a water trough. Oh, well, you mean if I was out roping? Yes, I was. Yes, you were out roping. Okay, and I'll guarantee you, if you're going to begrudge me my activity, there's going to be a heap of trouble in River City, boy. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, I just come up with an idea this morning that would help clean up the NFL. I don't think you've got a broom big enough. I 
this would work. If you have a domestic violence charge, you cannot play in the NFL for four years. Mm-hmm. If you have a felony, you're banned from the NFL. Mm-hmm. For life. Okay. That, that would clean up probably 80, 90 percent of them that's taken the knee. Uh, some of the backgrounds and some of the history on some of these players is absolutely disgusting. Yes, it is. it really is. They are coddled. They're you know they're just they're there to make the team an almighty dollar, and they don't care what their background is or what they do. They're going to cover it up and let them keep playing. Well, wait a minute. If you are taking a knee. And uh, you're sitting there and saying, well, I have these gripes and complaints against the United States of America for inequality and racial injustice, and uh, I think it's unfair with our courts, etc. Okay, stop right there. If you are offered a chance and an opportunity to go and voice your complaints at the White House to the President of the United States, and you say, no, I don't want to talk to Trump, why should I give your complaints any validity? You shouldn't, because the complaint, the complaint is hollow. It has no basis if you're not willing to discuss it and try to resolve it. The only thing you're doing is... You're mad at the president because he says what the people feel, and you don't like him. That's the only reason they're doing this. They're not doing this for in social injustice. Because you look at it, if they were against social injustice, why aren't they against Emmanuel in Chicago for what he's letting happen in the lower, lower side or those communities in Chicago? Doug, I'm going to be very blunt right here. And wheels again, there's a little feedback on the line. Help me out, please. But I'm going to be very blunt, and I possibly am going to hurt uh, some people in the audience that are going to get mad at me. But I'm going to say it anyway. Right now, we have to consider fighting back for our country. We're letting Antifa march and other groups march and yell and chant, no borders, no walls, no USA at all. We've got the left that absolutely doesn't care. They've got bias. They're teaching bias in the classrooms against Donald Trump and his presidency. The USA Today come out with an op-ed piece saying that it's time to consider changing the Constitution and abolish the presidency, all because they hate Donald Trump. And I'm telling you something, Doug. This is my country. This is my country, my wife, my kids, my grandkids, everything. And I want borders. I want this Constitution, and I want this presidency, for I see the good that is coming out of it for the economy and our national security. But people are not willing to stand up and fight back, but we're going to have to sooner or later. Exactly. Exactly. They're going to keep poking the sleeping dog, and one day this sleeping dog is going to stand up and bite their heads off, and that's exactly what it's going to take. People do not like to hear the right, you and I, conservatives, say this, but it's the way it's got to be. When you've got Antifa and other groups that are out there maliciously trying to start trouble and maliciously trying to ruin our, our Constitution and our country, then it's time to pick up the doggone billy clubs and fight back. Exactly. And you tell me there's only one difference that I can see between Antifa and the KKK. Only one difference, and that's they wear black masks instead of white hoods. They are backed by the Democrats. If the Democrats was against them, if they were Antifa was against the Democrats and Hillary Clinton, they'd have been shut down a long time ago because Soros wouldn't be sponsoring them. Why should I sit back in a country that has been so good to me and I've tried to repay and do as much as I can uh, back to for my country and for the service people, the military, etc. Why should I sit back and let this filth, these degenerates, go out and yell and scream they're going to uh, condemn and damn the borders, no walls, no USA at all? Why should I let that happen and just sit back and go ho-hum, gee whiz, it looks like they won. We have got to fight back yes we do yes we do and just think about it they're taking down all the confederate 
statues and everything on the Confederacy when the whites, the North, the Republicans fought against the Democrats to end slavery. I don't want to see Robert E. Lee's statue taken down. I don't either. I'll tell you why. The man, the man was one of the leaders of the Confederacy, and after the Civil War was over, the man was one of the great leaders in this country to reunite the United States of America, and he went on to bigger and better things as a great American leader. Exactly. And, he, and as far as I know, I've never really, really dug into it, but he didn't even have slaves. I'm just sick and tired of letting the left dictate what path we're going to go down. And quite frankly, I am one person. I know I'm going to get emails. I know I'm going to get some nasty calls. But if it comes down to push and shove, listen to me, left. Listen to me. If it comes down to push and shove about advocating violence to help save this country, you're looking at an advocate right here. Yeah, well, that's what Antifa is. That's the only thing they resort to is violence. You know, when there's ten of them against one or two people wearing a Trump hat, they're, they're real tough, rough and tough. But you let them get up against the bikers and that there, and they don't even show up. You got it, man. I'll tell you, though, I'm serious about this. It's coming to a confrontation like I've mentioned, Doug, because we have got to wake up and realize, are we going to let this filth and this sleaze take over and destroy our country? No. That's it. Bottom line. Bottom line. Right there. I've got a... We've had a, civil, we've had a civil war over this before. And, it, and the left is pushing for another civil war. Uh, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But the, the us, the conservatives, and those that say, oh, gee, let's not have a confrontation. Can't we all just love each other and get along? And the answer to that is no. Well, we've only got two cheeks, and we've already turned them both. I, I'm not going to play bobblehead doll with anybody. Nope. Nope. i got to run. Let's do what we can for our seniors, guys. Just just like the yummy man said, go have lunch at a senior center. You will be really enlightened, and it's a very valuable and a very good lunch at a very low price. I don't think that Joe Taylor ever envisioned at 90, whatever age he is, that he would be called a new nickname called the yummy man. The yummy man. <laughs> Gotta go. Hey, the weather forecast brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And, of course, they're located right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. And the number to call for an appointment, I urge you to call for an appointment for a hearing screening, is 312-0957. 312-0957 for your hearing health. Dr. Pickup, Dr. Mitchell, the best. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Sunny for this week. However, smoke's going to play a factor as well. So if you have some upper respiratory issues, please make note of that. Here's your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. Smoky in our area, mostly sunny skies. I don't know how much sun we're actually going to see, though. Expecting a high of 91 tonight, partly cloudy and still smoky with a low of 60. Smoky for Tuesday, expecting a high of 92, slightly breezy as well. Tuesday night, we are expecting a low of 60. For Wednesday, partly sunny skies, high of 90. As we move on into the late afternoon hours, early evening hours of Wednesday, we do have a slight chance of rain showers and thunderstorms in the area with a low of 60. That's your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. Thank you, Gina, and brought to everybody by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Oh, wonderful people. I went there for hearing screening. You should, too. Did they help? Yes, they did, and they can help you, too. 312-0957. Call them today. You know, it's really the truth. We are losing our country. Why do we send soldiers, our soldiers, men and women over to seas, overseas to fight for other countries and for the keeping the peace in our country when right here at home we're letting the filth and the sleaze and the degenerates Try to take this country away from us. Why is it that when we speak out, we're called hate mongers and bigots? I know I'm going to get those emails, and I know I'm going to get those calls by these gutless people. But we, why can't I speak out? I love this country. 
I have been all over the world, and I love the United States of America. I can't even fathom trying to thank the military men and women that have given their lives for me to enjoy this great country, the United States. And to see and listen to these jerks, that's what they are, pathetic jerks, march for the denigration of our Constitution, yell and scream for the denigration of the United States. Why shouldn't I speak up? Why shouldn't you speak up? And, quite frankly, if it amounts to confrontations in the future to upend the wagon with these knotheads, so be it. I don't want to see the United States go down. I don't want to hear these kind of chants, no borders, no walls, no USA at all. Are you kidding me? I love this country. I love this country. I can't say it enough. And I'm proud of this country. And I don't want to let this sleaze, this algae, like a cancer, grow on the water. It's got to stop. And you and I and others really have to stop it. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I was not kidding earlier when I made the comment about the sleazy left, which they are. USA Today had an op-ed piece that said it is, basically I'm giving a summation quickly because of time constraints, it's past time to change the Constitution and possibly abolish the presidency. Why was this written? Well, it's because they can't stand President Trump. Little by little, inch by inch, we are sitting back and not doing or saying anything about this, and the left is getting bigger like a cancer that absolutely will kill. In Massachusetts, some of the schools and some of the teachers are openly going after President Trump in the classrooms. And they're very biased, and they're chastising those that are supporters of Trump's. They should be fired for this bias. Isn't a school for the uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic and uh, not the absolute embarrassment or trying to line out someone that is on the right or someone that's a supporter of Trump and trying to embarrass them with their bias and literally cause havoc in the schools? It's time to fight back. Your thoughts, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. If you're planning a road trip before the kids go back to school, don't forget, check your tires. Holy moly, look at that. You've got some bald spots there. Don't leave, don't leave. Go to your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers first and check out all the great tire buys for your car, your pickup, your SUV, camp trailer, boat trailer, horse trailer, what? Whatever, and many of which are on sale right now. So check it out today. And also make sure with the best of brake service available to you, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, make sure you're road trip ready. Stop in and see them today. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley. Les Schwab Tire Centers. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, Let's see. What else have we got cooking? Oh, Cassia County Fair Week. I want to urge you to be a part of all the big festivities of the Cassia County Fair. And today they're kind of just moving in. And uh, they've got uh, the entering of the 4-H and FFA Dairy. And they've got all the uh, judging going on of the 4-H and FFA projects. And and at 1 o'clock today they're going to have a 4-H and FFA Dairy Show. And tonight, of course, the uh, big moto rodeo at the uh, fairgrounds in the arena. That's going to start, I believe, at 8 p.m. tonight, so don't miss that. Uh, All kinds of things going on at your Cassia County Fair and rodeo. 
Coming up next hour, we have had a change in the list. And I, Wheels, did you get that change emailed to you, my dear friend? I did. And, uh, uh, talk to talk into your mic. You're way too far away. Is that, is that no, you're not on the right mic. It's not coming through. There, that's a lot better. Thank you. Um, I, I did get it. Uh, I know that you said that he needed to be on for 906. Yes. And so um, I seen that they were trying to do it for 11 or something. No, no, that's 11 Eastern. Don't worry about that. That All on Easter time. You just call him at 906. He'll be ready. All right. Well, All right. Sir. Thank you. Right now, we're going to take a little break, send it back over to our main studios. And, of course, uh, we'll have CBS News. We'll be back in 7. Uh, good morning. Uh, great day, Monday, August 13th. Holy cow, we're already at the middle point of August. <laughs> Where'd this year go anyway? Hey, welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, and of course with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And of course, if you're getting ready for a road trip, you better stop in and see them first, okay? And then also some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's have this good word for Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're all in the Georgia circle. Western Way Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Way Services is lending a hand, always at Georgia circle. Uh, Just this last week, as a matter of fact, I had some folks call me and say, well, how do we get on that route service to have our garbage picked up? And I said, it is easy. All you need to do is call 734-6969. Western Way Services, nice people serving you and the most reliable pickup service for your garbage. You call them today, 734-6969. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. As I mentioned, the Cashew County Fair is in full swing, and some of the merchants that want you to come on in to Burley for the Cashew County Fair include Baker Brothers Pump Service at 103 West 500 South Burley. Don't forget the fastest, most reliable pump service company around. I guarantee it. And uh, they can do it all from residential pump service to water softener sales. Baker Brothers Pump Service. And Burley Veterinary Hospital at 2869 Overland in Burley, 2 Two great doctors serving all your animals' needs, both large animal and small animal. Burley Veterinary Hospital and Redder Showcase. They got a great big fair day sale going on mm-hmm. at 2611 Overland Avenue in Burley. 12 months, same as cash. Freezers and washers and dryers and refrigerators. Oh, you bet. I better say that again. Refrigerators. There, it sounds better. All of this and more at Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland in Burley. Right now, let's go to the phone line. We have had a few personnel changes this morning, and I believe we have a brand new person that's never, ever been on my program before, and we say a good morning to a Marine national security expert for Americans for limited government, Prentice LeBlanc. Good morning. How are you? Hey, this is Rick Manning. Unfortunately, Prentice is... Prentice isn't going to be joining you. I'm, you're, you're stuck with me, your regular president of American Civil Limited Government today. As I just said a moment ago, and welcome again on a Monday morning to Richard Manning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the mix-up on our end. I uh, appreciate you having us on, and uh, we are... Uh, Looking forward to talking about what's going on in the country. I was going to say, holy smokes, Prentice has the same voice clonage as you do. <laughs> well, that's, I think as a compliment. Uh, he has uh, he has Marine voice, and it's uh, pretty authoritative, and he's uh, he looks the part. So um, anything, uh, any compliment, any comparison to Prentice is a... 
huge compliment for me. Well, I'll tell you what, Richard, I absolutely look forward to having you on the air on Monday mornings because you take all of my kind of uh, over-the-plate fastballs and you really hit some home runs on your answers. And I want to start, first of all, this morning with Antifa and the marching and the no borders, no walls, no USA at all. And I made the comment in the first hour, Richard, and I'm going to stand behind this, that these kind of groups, this kind of activity about uh, damning and condemning America has got to stop. I, for one, love this country, and I'm not going to stand by and see these vermin destroy it. Well, absolutely. You've got it. It's on the head, but... Understand a simple thing, and your listeners have to understand this. That those people aren't being condemned by the Democrats. That, that rhetoric isn't being condemned by the Democrats. That, in fact, that rhetoric is being embraced by the Democrats. This is the Democratic Socialist Party, and it is the problem that we see going forward. So it's a so this is a new. This is something that is uh, unfortunately the new normal with the Democrats. When you say the new normal, well, okay, Richard, I said this also first hour. It might resort in a civil uh, war, if you will, or disobedience. I'm not about to let these people take over my country and destroy it without a fight. No, absolutely. We can't allow that. We just have to be aware that these these people are not an anomaly. They're not a sideshow that we can dismiss as being just a few kooks. They're the people who are running and winning in many Democratic primaries. They're the, you know, the ocasio Cortezes um, activated on the streets. This isn't part of a, uh, what they're talking about is a plan. And all you need to know to, to realize that is that immediately upon uh, this push for abolish ICE, somebody who was considered when she first ran for Senate, for U.S. Senate, Kirsten Gillibrand from, uh, from New York, she was considered to be a moderate Democrat, was the first person to jump on the uh, jump on the bandwagon and said, we have to eliminate ICE. We have to eliminate our border enforcement agencies. We have to eliminate those who are looking at uh, keeping, us, keeping us safe from people who don't have good intentions. And that's a, it's astonishing to me that you have a, that they have come out so clearly out of the closet as being what they are, and that is radical Marxists. There's no other way you can put it. They are, you know, this this idea, the Antifa, Antifa movement makes no bones about it. Go to their website. They have a website. The website should tell you that they are communists. The not say they're socialists. It says they're communists. And that, you know, unless their website's been cleaned up in the last three months, the last time I looked at it. So, you know, and yet we don't see condemnation from the left. We don't see condemnation at all. We see embracing uh, their uh, their principles. And, uh, and quite honestly, justification for violence that they commit. So that's what we're facing. We just have to understand it, deal with it, and basically if our members of Congress on the Republican side aren't willing to confront it, then you need to replace them with somebody on the Republican side who will. You know, but let me ask you this on a time frame. And Wheels at the station, watch the game, please, Wheels. I need that feedback cut back. Here we are sending our soldiers into harm's way all over the world, whether it's Afghanistan, whatever the area. We're sending our soldiers to fight for other countries and also for the protection of our country, the United States. And meanwhile at home, we're letting this sleaze and this filth like Antifa and everybody else go out and preach no borders, no walls, no USA at all. Why don't we bring our soldiers home to fight them? Well, hopefully we don't have to. It's a, you know, but I will tell you, I, my my great solace in, in all of this is, you know, we, we take a look and so often we, we bemoan millennials, and yet the, the soldiers who are out there doing all, near impossible things around the world um, are millennials. So, you know, we have this, while well, we have this, um, this, this, Millennial class, the snowflake class, it's, that we're seem to be graduating out of our colleges. Um, we also have millennials who are um, fighting for our country, fighting for freedom around the world, and are in fact people who are the best fighting force in the history of the world. And it's through you know their work, their dedication, and uh, effectively their their willingness to sacrifice, which is something which are. are the Antifa folk, um, you know, here's their idea of uh, sacrifice is 
gee, I'm going to put a mask on so nobody knows who I am, so there's no downside cost, and I'm going to go attack, blind somebody and hit them uh, with a with a pole or with a with a rock or with any other kind of device. I'm going to I'm going to hurt people, and then I'm going to go back to my life and you know ride my bike to my school to my uh, job. Um, with an unmasked, I mean, they're no different than the KKK. When the KKK wore, you know, they were wearing their masks and nobody knew who they were so they could go back to their normal lives and nobody would suspect. That's what Antifa is. They're just anti. They're just far left crazies and we have to stand up to them and the Democrats need to start condemning them because otherwise we have to assume that they accept them. Oh, you know, Richard, you're one of the sharpest people I've, I have on my program on a weekly basis and I really you. value no. your opinion. But you can see the seeds of insurrection and hate and despicable attitude towards this country when you pick up the USA Today and read on the op-ed piece that they want to change the Constitution and they want to possibly abolish the presidency. And you have other newspapers and other TV shows and commentators that are so sick and tired of hate with Trump that they will do anything to denigrate America. This has got to stop. Well, we would think it's the best way to stop it is, you know, USA Today makes a choice of what gets to be on their pages. And, you know, this idea that everybody should have a voice isn't true because that's not the way they operate. They say, you know, we're going to let this person have a voice. We're not going to let that person have a voice. Limited space on their pages. And the fact is that USA Today, which sells itself as the nation's newspaper, um, allows that voice from those radicals to have a legitimizing place on their uh, opinion section, uh, speaks volumes about USA Today and, and the Gannett Corporation that owns them. Now, it, the, the challenge here is very simple. The left, this is the natural outcome of what the left wants to do. They've been delegitimizing people who supported Donald Trump from day one. They've attempted, you know, they attacked Trump supporters during the campaign, and, they, and the Democrats said nothing and did nothing. You know, you got occasionally a tut-tut, but with an explan explanation, you got to understand they're just upset because the Trump supporters are so radical and evil. Well, that's the, you know, effectively when you demonize people by calling them, constantly calling them Nazis, which is what the left has done to anybody who supports Trump, then what you have effectively done is you've rationalized any kind of violence against those people, and that's what the, the well, that's what Antifa is. It's the, it's the violent wing of the, of the Democratic Party, and, you know, they may not like it, but to be called that way, but that's exactly what it is. And the Democratic Party itself has a responsibility to rein them in. The media has a responsibility to rein them in. But the fact is, the media actually kind of likes them because they're a proxy for what most of these people in the media would like to be doing themselves. They do violence with their words against us. The, these Antifa people are taking that violence onto the streets to do it. And, you know, bottom line is, People are going to get fed up, and they're not going to put up with it, and it's going to get really, really ugly if the left doesn't get this violent, violent strain under control. You know, I couldn't agree with you more, and but yet... I love this country, Richard, as I said last hour. I know you do, too. And we sit here as Americans, and now it's time not to sit. It's time to stand up. And I don't care what avenues we need to go on. I want to protect this country for my grandchildren and future generations. I don't want to see the Constitution changed. I don't want to see a, an abolishment of the presidency. I don't want to see socialism. We can't sit back and do nothing as these people on the left are trying to gain power and control 100 percent correct and that's a you know if the people of america and this is where the midterm elections come in if the people of america sit there and say you know i don't really feel like i want to i need to vote i don't really you know i don't like i don't like this guy as much as i would have liked another candidate um you know all that kind of stuff and they allow these violent extremists to take a toehold within the Congress itself, if they allow for the Democratic Party, the Democrats have nominated some wild, wild characters. And if they allow those wild characters to become the, uh, to have legitimate voices on the House floor, um, on the Senate floor, then 
you know, we've effectively turned over our country to them because we were indifferent. And this is not a time for indifference. Absolutely. Is at a, is at a crossroads. Absolutely. Really feel that way? I think for the first time, internally, we actually are. And the battle Zeb, is, is over something fundamental. It's about the DNA of the country. You know, we always get told whenever we stand up, they say, oh, well, that's not who America is. Well, I'm sorry, but you don't get to define that. The left doesn't get to define who America is. Thomas Jefferson defined who America was in the preamble of the, of the Declaration of Independence when he said all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's, and then he follows up, and, and unfortunately I don't have this part memorized, and I, and I need to. It, it talks about, you know, and, and to, toward these ends, the, people, there's a, the people create a government. And that government is operates under the consent of the governed. And effectively what these what the Antifa people want to do and what the Democrats want to do, whether they're shilling as journalists or something else, is what they want to do is they want to shut down people from actually participating in government and legitimize those inside the government who are seeking and I'm talking about bureaucrats at this point, who are seeking to obstruct the elected the will of the elected representatives by imposing, by effectively slowing down operations and creating a, a bureaucratic uh, slowdown against the Trump regulations and the like. Those are the, that's the, the resist that we're seeing inside, inside Washington, D.C. And then on the outside, you see the Antifa movement, which is attacking people who differ, who differ from their opinion. Well, I'm not going to stand up and say that, the, that uh, you know, if you want to take it down this past weekend, those bozos who were running around with the Unite the Right thing, they were bozos, okay? There's, there's four, like 400 of them showed up in Washington, D.C. It was organized by a guy who went in Dinesh D'Souza's movie um, uh, that just came out. I can't remember the name of it. Um, it is a, it, one of the leaders was, was actually interviewed in it, and the guy is for... He's pro-abortion. He's he's for big government. He's a he's a Marxist. He's a lefty. So there's no that's not uniting the right. That's a shill who's trying to create a, a, a flashpoint for the left to uh, attack. And let's just not fall into their traps. Let's do what's right for America, and let's stand up for America and be proudly waving our flag and just say, you know what? You're not going to de- deter us. We're going to get out to vote. We're going to win. Right there. Right there is the key. Let's get out to vote. Now, I think you and I are on the same railroad track here. I am absolutely ashamed of the voting turnout by the Republicans in some of the state elections that have already been held. It almost is like they've got a, a attitude like, ah, well, we'll win, and if we don't, big deal. Uh, what in the world is going on with the complacency in this country? Are we that naive and stupid that we're not going to get out and support what really needs to be done? Well, I think the key is if you're operating under the illusion that the Democrats or your, your father or grandfather's Democratic Party, it may not seem like it's as imperative to get out and, and vote, but if you recognize, if you pay attention to who the Democrats actually are, they're not your grandfather or father's Democratic Party. They're not for the for the union worker. They're not for the, you know, we're not having a disagreement over whether or not, you know, some marginal tax rates, uh, what they should be. We're having a disagreement about the fundamental nature of our nation, and that's a different kind of disagreement. This isn't even a disagreement about whether or not we should be in a war or not. This is a disagreement about who we should be, what our DNA is, and, there is, and they are engaged in a hostile takeover of our nation. And if we don't stand up now, we will wake up and we will say, what happened? How did this happen? And the answer will be, you didn't come out and vote. Don't be that person who wonders why, why the government is going so crazy and, then, and why President Trump's being impeached and how come the, it seems like insanity has been unleashed on the world. When you didn't go out and do the most basic thing, and that is vote. But, Richard, I'm going to put you on the spot here in the last three minutes. How do I, as a talk show host, how do I, as a talk show host, and you and everybody else, how do we plant that seed to have people get up off the couch, put the bonbons down, turn off the TV, and take 15 minutes to go vote? I don't know what to do. Um, I think the answer is we have to show the le- show the left for what it is. We have to show the alternative um, to what what's the status quo. 
uh, we have to take and go to the Antifa website, read what they read what they say, tell your and you know, let your your listeners know. I mean, this is a you know this is a battle for the nation's future. It is not a this is not a you know oh well we lose this time maybe we win next time kind of thing. We have to we have to win this election, and you know and then the last question is if you want to have the you know the next two years be about President Trump's impeachment, well. Stay at home. Yeah, you know, that's a because that's what happens if you stay at home. If you go to if you go out and we we elect reasonable people, now at least we have a shot. But if we elect these wackos, um, this is going to get really really hard over the next two years. And if you think it's bad now, it's going to escalate uh, dramatically. Absolutely. Real quick answer on this one. Uh, last subject I want to talk to you about this morning. Is there any validity? at all about Amarosa and the firing of her out of the administration and now she's trying to reveal some uh, secrets of the administration. What do you give this story on a scale of 1 to 10? Zero. That a boy. Um, that a boy. She never have been hired in the first place. That was the president's original sin on this. She contributed nothing to the administration. Um, and and now she's bitter because she's been booted out, and she's looking to make money. So you know that's but that, that the fact the president surprised at this is the most shocking part. That's who she is. Yeah. So we expect. I absolutely agree. Boy, I'm glad you were on the program this morning. I had a chance to vent, and you picked up my venting, and you threw it back in the bucket. I appreciate that. Richard Manning, President of Americans for Limited Government. God bless you, man. We'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, we had Richard on after all, and I'm very glad we did. Richard Manning, a great American and president, like I said, of Americans for limited government. Deanne and I both were scratching our head because we weren't sure how the schedule had changed. Wheels, I'm sorry. We were just giving you the information that we had. I apologize for the confusion. No, you're all right, sir. I'm glad we could get him on. All right, buddy. Thank you for your help. I do appreciate it. I want to remind everybody about our friends at Ark Animal Hospital. Oh, yes, they take care of all the dogs, the kitty cats, and the cattle, and the horses, everything. Mixed animal practice, meaning large and small. They take care of them all. And they want to wish good luck to all the 4-H and FFA kids out there. Good luck at the fair. Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. Number to call is 678-1177. Great doctors over there, Dr. Bill, Dr. Jordan, and the whole staff serving you and your animals to keep them healthy at Ark Animal Hospital, where they do, they do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Really good people. Also want to say a big thank you to some folks that have been so good on this program and so good for the community and serving you and your family. Yes, you know I'm talking about our friends at Hanson Mortuary at uh, 710, that is, 6th Street in Rupert. And, of course, the number to call, 436-5636. Joel Heward, the manager, and, of course, his family and staff serving you and your family always, always, with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. When there's the passing of a loved one, please remember their number and call. They can and they will help you. 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert, and Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Woo, wow, busy morning this morning, and in just a moment, I believe we're going to go to our next guest, and that's Jason Pye, and we'll have him on the air in just a few moments, so don't go away. Uh, before I get there, I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Least Furniture Floors and more. Hello, Jeff and the rest of the staff over there at Least Furniture. Wow, it's going to be turning cold before we know it. I know you're looking at the thermometer, and you're looking at the radio and going, Zab, it's both to get up in the 90s again. Yeah, well, it's going to be cold before we know it. And maybe you better get in and figure out, well, maybe you need new carpeting for this fall and winter. Or maybe you need a new uh, living room set. Maybe you need a new bedroom set. Well, all of this and more 
over at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and More. And don't forget, they got a great big mattress sale going on right now at 459 Overland and Burley, Lee's Furniture, Floors, and More. And they're waiting right now for you. Stop in. See them today. And also, real quick, uh, boy, I, t- I can't stress enough that if you want to get outside and you just want to just see the beauty of southern Idaho, go over to Let's Ride, where the fun is sold. They've got all the ATVs. They've got all the watercrafts. They've got those new side-by-sides, the Maverick Sport side-by-side. Check it out, big fancy dude. Oh, 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 my. And they've got a super accessory department. And, of course, to keep you running, the best doggone service department around. Let's Ride, two 70 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, and it is the truth. This is where the fun is sold. Let's ride. Uh, I think we're going to go to the phone line right now, and believe me, Wheels, the way things have been going today, I have no idea where we are or where we're headed, but we'll do the best we can to figure it out. And I believe we're going to go to the Vice President of Legislative Affairs for Freedom Works, and Jason Pye is on the phone. Good morning, Jason. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing? It's been a Monday morning, my friend, so help me out. Uh, Jason, on behalf of your organization, Freedom Works, what is this about uh, Internet sales taxing? I've got to admit up front that you're talking to absolutely the most ignorant person when it comes to the, uh, the Internet. So go ahead and give me a thumbnail sketch of what we're going to talk about this morning. Sure. In, in 1992, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that uh, a state uh, could not tax a business, that, uh, could not charge a business an online sales tax uh, if the business did not have a physical nexus or a physical presence inside those, that state's borders. And that case was the, the Quill case, uh, again, in 1992. Uh, unfortunately, just a couple months ago, the Supreme Court uh, put out a ruling uh, in the Wayfair case, uh, basically uh, overturning that 1992 case, opening up states, uh, giving them the ability to tax businesses that do not have physical presences inside of a state. So basically what we're looking at is, uh, I live in Georgia, uh, so if I buy, uh, if, if I decide to start a business and sell uh, uh, widgets or whatever it may be, and you buy them in Idaho, um, uh, the uh, Idaho Department of Revenue can charge me a sales tax uh, in Georgia. Uh, from, or despite the fact that I live in Georgia, so uh, I'm being open to, opened up to uh, paying taxes or, or to collecting taxes for Idaho, despite not having representation there. So we're we're talking what we're talking about here is really a taxation without representation issue, uh, and uh, states getting more money in their coffers to, uh, to to spend. Now, some people say, well, that may not be uh, a big concern, but I would submit to you, based on my experience in state legislatures, that uh, working in state legislatures, that states. I tend to waste as much money as the, as the federal government does, so that may not necessarily be a good thing. But it also opens up uh, businesses to uh, a new host of regulation that is going to be very difficult to comply with, especially small businesses that may not have the resources necessary uh, to comply with the state tax burden. You're talking about 10,000 different tax taxing jurisdictions across the country. And that's an estimate. Uh, estimates vary between about 10 and 12,000 uh, taxing jurisdictions. That's cities, states, uh, what have you, and counties. So uh, the compliance burden here could be very real and could uh, could put people out of business if if, uh, if we're not careful. Uh, so what we think should be done is there should be something there, uh, ideally to prohibit uh, cross state internet sales tax. But uh, if not that, then to protect small businesses uh, who, uh, especially mom and pop shops, uh, who increasingly rely on the internet to do business. So uh, having protections in place so they're not put out of business. I guess I'm still a little confused as to why there was an origination of thought to have a sales tax on the Internet. Were they trying to protect local community businesses, or what were their main purposes in trying to enforce the sales tax? So there's a couple of different lines of thought here. First, you have, you have the brick-and-mortar retailers. Um, uh, big big shops that have stores and have presences around the country. Think of Walmart, think of uh, Target, uh, those big retailers. They wanted an Internet sales tax put in place uh, as a form of protectionism to guard against 
uh, big online retailers that have been coming up, uh, you know, uh, like eBay or Amazon, although Amazon, uh, with it being so big, can really e- easily absorb those costs. Um, uh, but that was that was one thing, so a form of protectionism by brick-and-mortar stores. The other side of the equation is uh, state legislators and governments wanting more money in their coffers, and the online sales tax uh, would be a way for them to have more money uh, to spend. That's, that's essentially the, the, the two biggest lines of thought behind this. Now, I'll say, don't say other things, um, but that's really what it is. Well, I guess my question would be, uh, shouldn't we be looking at a protection device for the brick and mortar, for the community businesses, so that there would be not so much a push for the Internet sales and uh, Internet uh, transportation of goods, etc., and try to support the local community stores? Well, local community stores actually are using the Internet to purchase their products to... to, uh to uh, to do business, they're they're increasingly turning online to sell their products. So local business using the internet sales tax or some sort of justification for that to protect local businesses really doesn't doesn't really pass the smell test. Uh, but big businesses, the big stores, that's why they want it is to put online retailers out of business. And and what I would say is, and, and this is the free market at work. Uh, the markets of, markets evolve where people are. You can you may go to your local store to buy something. They probably they may not have it in stock, but you're almost guaranteed to go on Amazon.com or to uh, Wayfair or to Overstock.com and be able to purchase it online. Uh, and you'll have it in a couple of days, uh, generally speaking. And most people are willing to wait that long. And look, especially the younger people who and uh, younger people are increasingly turning online to do their shopping. Uh, I can this is a subjective example, but my wife and I we hardly ever go out anymore to, to purchase anything. Uh, except for groceries, and at Christmas we do, I'd say, 95% of our shopping online. So it's more of a convenience matter as well. This is how markets evolve, and uh, an Internet sales tax or uh, some sort of it, Internet sales tax is just a protectionist measure. That's what that is. It's the same as tariffs. I guess where I'm coming from, though, Jason, I'm an old man, and I don't know how old you are, and it'd be rude for me to ask, but I don't want to see the death of community. I don't want to see the death of local businesses, and that's what I'm afraid of. I mean, people have been saying saying that for years, and yet I see more and more local businesses popping up where I live. And I'm 37 years old, by the way, um, but I see more and more big business, oh, local businesses popping up all over the place where I live. Um, the, the town square in my hometown is it's it's full of uh, new businesses, entrepreneurs who are coming out of uh, nowhere to start businesses, to be innovative and and to promote new ideas, and it's working. I don't think that um, uh, that it, that a tax is going to promote their businesses at all. I think at the end of the day, it's actually probably going to wind up hurting them, given the fact that most of the business they conduct to put products in their stores is done online. Uh, and that just puts a new level of complexity in for their suppliers as well as themselves when they, uh, if they do any sales online. Is this the tip of the iceberg, per se, to the point where... Uh, you see bigger and broader things on the internet in the future, and again, the demise of local business. I, but, I mean, look, I think uh, I don't think that we're talking. I don't think there's going to be a demise in local business. I think what we're talking about here is is uh, a new level of complexity and tax compliance that is going to be very, uh, very hard for many small businesses, especially local businesses, to deal with, uh, and that protections need to be put in place to ensure that they aren't uh, they aren't over unnecessarily burdened. Uh, those are things that we're going to have to deal with and that Congress is going to have to deal with, as well as state legislators, uh, when they return to session, if they're not if they're not out of session already, when they return to session uh, next year. These are all things that they're going to have to deal with and, and have to really look at in terms of, uh, in terms of making sure this, this works for uh, works for everybody. Now, I understand that the Supreme Court is going to be looking at this case and make an edict and a, and a verdict on this. What are your thoughts as far as what do you think they will do? Well, the Supreme Court, again, the, the, in June, they already ruled on this in the Wayfair case. They right. shot down the 1992 Quill case. And they opened it up to allow states to collect business, uh, to collect online sales tax from businesses that aren't located inside their state borders. Uh, uh, and again, that's uh, they did put in protection for small businesses, but at the end of the day, that protection needs to be codified. Congress should take action and ensure that uh, 
that it can't be rolled back by another by a future court. Is there a fair and equitable taxation or schedule of taxes that can be applicable to this problem to make it more fair to everybody? Well, I mean, look, yeah, I mean, being a libertarian, I would I would submit to you that taxation is theft, but uh, <laughs> uh, at the same time, look, uh, I, I, I don't I, look states states want this to fill their coffers more than anything. Businesses want this to to weed out their competition. There's nothing fair about it, and there's not a way you can make it fair. The whole the entire premise of an internet sales tax is uh, based on the uh, uh, based on the belief that um, it's based on a protectionist belief, and that's that's what it is at the end of the day is to put people out of business or to make them incapable of doing business uh, because the compliance burdens are so heavy. Uh, that's 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 the entire notion on which this rests. So um, you either evolve or you die, and um, unfortunately, the brick and mortar businesses aren't able to evolve. At least it seems. Let me ask you a little bit about FreedomWorks, and you're the Vice President of Legislative Affairs. Tell my audience what you think they should know about your organization. Sure. So FreedomWorks is a grassroots service center to about 5 million activists, uh, conservative and libertarian activists across the country. We train them, we educate them, and we mobilize them on issues for uh, related to limited government and personal freedom. Uh, so well, a couple of things we've worked on are the tax reform bill that passed in December. We also work on uh, uh, regulation, uh, both in the regulatory bills that are introduced in Congress, as well as uh, regulation that is driven by the executive branch. Uh, we also have a number of other issues that we work on, but uh, our goal at the end of the day is to get results. And we've gotten we've had some successes this year, but we're looking for more uh, in, in the months to come. I'm, that's the brief elevator pitch. I am absolutely impressed with you and your business and what you do. Jason, I appreciate it very much, and we'll look forward to having you back in the future. Vice President of Legislative Affairs with FreedomWorks, Jason Pye. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. God bless. Thank you much. Uh, interesting about taxation on the Internet. I still, I still am old-fashioned enough to want to protect the community and the brick-and-mortar businesses within that community, more so than thinking about being able to order everything online and have it kind of basically dropped out of a helicopter right on your front porch. I just like the concept of community. Call me old-fashioned. Call me whatever. I like going to town. I like going into a business. I like the face-to-face uh, conversations. I like all that, and I don't want to see it diminished. What are your thoughts about that? Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. While I'm waiting for your call that I just know is coming in, don't forget to our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. When you think about life insurance and you think about health insurance, and you should, and retirement planning and employee benefits, do not forget to call Cameron and Siemens. Their number, 436 Four four two four. They are absolutely dedicated and responsive to your needs. Very, very devoted to serving you. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. That number again, 436-4424. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. For those of you that are golfers, and I know we have a lot of golfers in the audience, and for those of you that understand the value of certain people in certain sports remaining as figureheads to really help the sport grow and uh, be popular in the media, television, radio, newspaper, you probably are all thinking the same thing this morning, that after the U.S. Open yesterday with Brooks Kepka winning, but, but in second place, the return of Tiger Woods. Tiger has cleaned his life up. Tiger has cleaned his game up. Tiger has come back after some devastating injuries, and he made a real horse race out of it yesterday and finished second. Tiger Woods back in the fray. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good 
Good morning, Mr. Bell. How's things in uh, Murta? Well, about the same as they are over there north of Rupert, my dear friend. How are you? Uh, fine. Hey, I really enjoyed the uh, comments of your last guest, except I have the same uh, feeling you do. <laughs> 